this presentation is going to last for about 90 minutes. I'm going to hand you over to Glenn McLean, who will introduce our speakers. And I look forward to the presentation and to speaking to everyone throughout. Over to you, Glenn. Thank you, Lorraine. Look, I really appreciate uh, D32 and Business Arena uh, putting on this uh, opportunity to uh, bring people up to speed on the mountain of opportunity with China. Um, however, the most exciting people are here uh, with uh, Rachel and Simon to take us on that journey as our Sherpa and guides. Uh, so I will hand over to Simon and, um, and look forward to uh, going on the journey with you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Glenn. Um, a good, a good evening, afternoon or morning, everybody, depending on where you are. Um, so yeah, today we're going to look at how to reach the pinnacle of business with China. Um, it's quite important that it's with and not just at or to China. Um, so we've had a brief introduction of, of who we are. And so we're going to talk today about the mountain of opportunity is 1.4 billion customers. There is no bigger market. So the pinnacle of consumer markets is China. And if you can find a pathway to sell to 1.4 billion, you have the biggest brand. So not only do we have 1.4 billion customers inside China, but around the rest of the world, we're looking at 50 million people. That's a lot of people. That's bigger than most countries. 1.4 million of those are in Australasia. So imagine growing your business with China trends. Um, so it feels fair to say that China is taking over the world. Some people see that as a negative thing, um, but it's also a massive opportunity. That's why we call it the mountain of opportunity. And it is a beautiful view from the top. I want to invite you to take a seat with me on an aircraft and uh, listen to one of our clients, Gabby Michael. So where's your, oh, your camera? Is where camera is over there. Yeah, there okay. you go. Hi. Cool. Hello. Hello, how are you? Gabriella. So, <laughs> why were we in China? Oh, to take uh, the brewers over, really, the Chinese brewers, to understand our malts and make the most of it. Set up SBI, which is our new distributor. Yeah. And get good understanding of their culture and what's the new, the new inn in China. Cool. Would you please to know the supernova and the saisons are taken over now. Nice. So, let's brand that. And the Gladiator, which I was so surprised to know that it's a good, uh, it's a malt that everyone wants to hear, so Very bring cool. it on. So on this trip, what did you learn about craft beer in China? I learned that it's bigger than a lot of people estimate. Nice. I learned the brewers are more innovative, then they want to make different beers. Obviously, it's not the hop is not that forward here, which for us is a good thing too, is a malt driven beer, a lot of wheat beer, so perhaps come up with um, wheat malts that cater to the Chinese taste. Cool, fantastic. So for somebody not in the beer or ingredients business, um, what's your what's your take on China? Embrace. Uh, they, they are so gentle and so welcoming and really if you show interest in their culture, they will respect you for it. And I think that's what I most take. And if you really want to be successful here, or if you want to have a good time here, embrace the culture and, and, and learn. And yeah, you've been pretty good to me, Simon, on that respect. Thank you. Yeah, Thank show, you. show me the culture and make me feel that I'm not a, obviously you're always going to be a foreigner here, but to make the most of it and learn their ways and be respected here as well. Nice, nice. So, what would be your advice to somebody who's starting off or or they're exporting to China but they haven't got much on the ground experience? Uh, get Red Circle. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's what we're here. <laughs> uh, oh, get, get someone that understands and speak their language, not on a, as a translator, not a, a sterile, but like yourself, Simon. You understand Thank their you. culture, you respect. So uh, I think that comes across very well here for them. Awesome, awesome. Um, what's been the most, uh, like the three top experiences of this trip, good three or bad? Top. <laughs> okay, the it's the most, the top three would be the food, mm -hmm. 
food, the food. <laughs> and the beer. And the beer, it was pleasant. I had some very good beers. Nice. Uh, to be honest, my pick beer is Bravo Brewery. I wanna, oh, nice. I wanna have, I wanna be uh, their mode of choice because awesome. uh, uh, Rocky, yeah. the brewer there, he's really good. I uh, drank two of his beers and I was blown away nice. by how clean they were. Uh, see, the, the experience that I, I enjoyed the most is the being able to be on the ground here, like as I said, have, be here with you, that was pretty cool because you see the, the, the off bitten tracks that normally you don't. True. The, the bad experience was that people know the Chinese but don't use it, uh, don't use it to relate to everyday people and mm. I was sad to know that because mm. as I said at the beginning if you show empathy towards them and, and an interest in their culture they will respect you for it so I, I wish more people did that. That's really cool. Thank, Thank you, you. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> okay so um, so who was that? That was um, one of our clients that's a business to business company supplying beer ingredients to brewers in China which is a, um, a very exciting segment. Um, what did we do with Gabby and what did we learn? Um, first of all, we, um, we did uh, what we call marketing ear support. That's uh, establishing the brand in China. Um, so you're going to be learning a little bit more about that on this um, uh, presentation. Uh, and also we provided uh, on the ground a distribution channel. Um, so one of the first things we did for Gladford was actually connect them with uh, the people that they needed on the ground to do all the logistical hard yards and it's paying off. Um, this is a photo that they recently shared on social media of um, their very nice, very fancy new office. They're growing as a business because they have learned the keys to do well in China. So the view is very nice from the top of the mountain, from the pinnacle, um, but it is not so good if you fall off the mountain of opportunity. So I want to share with you um, a story now. You may have heard this. It's been quite famous around the world, um, but uh, let's just take a look at what's happened with Dolce and Gabbana. So Dolce & Gabbana is a world-famous fashion brand, uh, well-known and well-loved around the world. In China, they had planned the biggest event ever uh, in Shanghai, a fashion show, and they'd promoted it with a series of videos featuring a Chinese model trying to eat Italian food with chopsticks. Well, that didn't go down well at all, and so the social media backlash um, resulted in them cancelling the event. Now, what made it even worse, what added fuel to the fire, was a private conversation on Instagram between a journalist and one of the Dolce & Gabbana co-founders, who later said that he was hacked and it was somebody else, because what was in that conversation was very disrespectful to China uh, and Chinese culture. So, of course, he denied it. Later on, um, both founders made an apology, but it was too late. That event was cancelled. Several high-profile models and influencers have said they will never touch Dolce & Gabbana again, and there is serious talk about the company leaving the market altogether. All because of a campaign done with, without proper preparation and without proper cultural respect. Um, you know, they could have gone a long way with some real respect, but even the apologies were, were kind of half-hearted. Um, so what's resulted has been indeed a viral hit, but not the viral hit that they imagined. When the co-founder uh, said, not me, uh, and trying to say that he was hacked, the not me was not believed, but it did take off as a fantastic viral meme against Dolce & Gabbana. So there's quite a high profile, very recent death on the mountain of a brand that is very successful elsewhere, but not in China. Don't be like that brand. Okay, so that's a, you can see the full video, we'll, we, we can send that link out to you, but um, as you can see, um, their attempt at being edgy and creative just didn't go down very well at all, um, and um, they're not the only large brand that's been very successful elsewhere to have done this, so let's not make any mistake, China is a very hard market, that's why we um, analogize it to a mountain, it's got a beautiful view at the top, um, but also it's a dangerous place, so famous climbers like Uber, uh, like Suzuki and like uh, Louis Vuitton have also fallen to their death, uh, various stages of death. Um, and in fact, here's a fun fact. Um, if you're actually climbing up Mount Everest, do you know how people find their way? Dead people, dead bodies, uh, actually um, frozen dead people are actually used as way markers on the way to the summit. 
it's a very sobering uh, you know, reminder that um, China is, is not an easy market. It's not a copy and paste market where you take a, a similar, similar strategy to everywhere else. Um, so we've got Louis Vuitton, they're still in market, but they've suffered from brand damage. Um, they, they've suffered from devaluation of their brand. We've got Suzuki that's exited the market uh, entirely, and Uber that got bought out by their competitor and no longer gets to operate in, in China. Um, so what can we learn as we take a moment of silence? Okay. Um, what can we learn? Uh, we can learn that um, some key things that came through from both uh, Gabby's positive story and Dolce & Gabbana's disaster was empathy and connection are really important. We're going to be covering uh, emotional intelligence later on in this presentation. Um, so while we're going to talk to you about technology, we're going to talk to you about strategy, a really important part of the equation and something that I'm quite passionate about is actually respect and cultural connection. So anyway, um, yes, we've had that moment of silence and now let's um, move on. So let's once again ask Gabby, hey Gabby, what's your advice? <laughs> what would be your advice to somebody who's starting off or, or they're exporting to China but they haven't got much on the ground experience? Uh, get Red Circle. Ah, <laughs> oh, nice. That's what we're going to hear. <laughs> so it's, it's never any good when uh, I just uh, say you should, you know, you should come and work with our company. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it's great when a, a satisfied customer says you should work with Red Circle. So how? How do you actually do it? Um, you, you step into the Red Circle uh, and you climb with us. Uh, we're basically positioned as your Sherpas and your guides. And uh, my role is global expeditionary leader. I don't think there's any company in the world that has that role, global expeditionary leader. Um, but what I can tell you from my experience of climbing is that climbing is easier during sunshine. Uh, and it's the same with business, with making anything. You've got seasonal opportunities where you're actually able to make hay while the sun shines. So specifically what we're going to talk about today is your second Christmas. Uh, so Christmas is approaching really fast and um, businesses are looking for that opportunity to have that spike in sales. Well, you've got it. You've got Chinese New Year coming up on the 5th of February, 2019. It is a second Christmas. So our opportunity here today is to prepare for the second Christmas between December and January. We work while you rest. We actually, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually Chinese inside. Um, so I've adopted Chinese uh, habits and, and hours. Um, and uh, so you know, Australia and New Zealand businesses tend to completely stop in December and January. We're saying you don't have to do that. You go on holiday, but you get us ready the first few weeks of December and prepare and uh, come back and reap that uh, second Christmas, which is Chinese New Year. There's also another big event throughout the year, which is Chinese Black Friday. So Black Friday, the big e-commerce uh, festival in America, um, and this is known as Singles Day. Um, it started to become much more famous outside China. 11th of the 11th, um, it's bigger than Black Friday. It keeps on breaking records every year. That is another massive sales day. So the way to get prepared for that is to start in January. Preparation is nine-tenths of success. Now, those are two big events, Chinese New Year, Singles Day. We also have a bunch of other opportunities throughout the year. One great thing about Chinese uh, culture is that festivals are greatly respected. Even Western festivals like Halloween get a lot more play in China than they do in our countries. Um, so um, as a marketer, there's many leverageable events. So again, how do you reach the pinnacle of business with China? We got Sherpas and your guides. So to climb, to climb a mountain, you need a Sherpa and guide. You can see on this um, illustration, we've got the Sherpa leading the way in front. So knowing where to go. Now the thing about mountains, um, they seem immovable. They seem like they stay the same forever, but the, the snow and the landscape is perpetually changing. And that's true with China as well. Another way that I think of China is like a planet that goes faster than uh, in, anywhere else in the world. Things change very fast. So Sherpa doesn't know everything that's going to happen, but they know that mountain. It is their mountain. And when we talk to you about being your Sherpa on the mountain, this is my mountain. And so, so come with me. We also have guides. That's why Rachel's on this call today. She is a guide to prevent you actually falling off that mountain. Um, so we saw what that looked like. It, it takes various different, it can be catastrophic like Dolce & Gabbana, or it can be just gradually winnowing away your competitive edge like uh, Louis Vuitton. Um, so all that I've been saying sounds like it's going to be very, very hard, right? So I want to 
I want to let that sink in because it's true. But I also want to say we have been working very hard to make that whole journey easy so that we can actually say to you, just add China. Because you actually already have in your hands what it takes to set up this neglected market um, and, and actually use that second Christmas opportunity. So Just Add China um, is about taking your existing content, your existing products, your existing Christmas range, and being able to sell that to the Chinese market, local market or um, in China market. It depends on your business. We've, we've had a bit of a look at the attendee list and what industries and places people are in. Um, so um, each one will have a different strategy. That's why we have at the end of this presentation an opportunity to take the test and see how China business ready you are. But the, uh, the, the key idea is to just add China. So to prepare your platforms, you must be on the right platforms. So the other thing about China is that it is like a parallel universe. If you try and market using Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, you're not going to be very successful because those platforms are blocked in China. Now, even if you are reaching a local in Perth or in Sydney or Auckland, a local Chinese audience, the habits that shape the online media consumption have taken place in China and from family members in China. So you've got to be on WeChat. Now, WeChat, people often think of it like WhatsApp. Um, it is a chat app, but that's just scratching the surface. Um, it is a professional, it, it, first of all, it's a wallet. And we're gonna, Rachel's going to show us uh, just in a few minutes what that looks like. Um, it, it is also um, a, a, a professional communications tool um, using an official account, WeChat official account. Um, so what we do in conjunction with your team is learning how to promote and monitor and report and monetize your social engagement. Now, 50% of large Australian businesses are using social media at the moment. So you've already got the ideas that it takes. You just need to just add China. And, um, and what we do is just to uh, gain a formal certification. So just gonna um, uh, hand over to uh, Rachel and Lynn. Um, so um, I just want to introduce you, Rachel, um, operations and social media specialist at Entering. Um, so you support Western businesses to make a shift from West to East social commerce marketing. Um, and um, we've got uh, RCN Mall that we would like you to um, share with us uh, what it looks like from the user's point of view. So... Um, Okay, um, well, hi, hi everyone, and thank you, Simon, for passing this on to me. Yes, um, so I represent Enry, we are an IT company that specialises in social media, especially under WeChat. So we have built a platform to, that works under the social media app WeChat, where you can pr put your product inside if all the users' social media, and so they have easy access to your product and easy payment all within the WeChat. So let me quickly share this my phone with you so that everyone can see how it actually works on WeChat. Let me just have this. Uh, great, go ahead and see your screen when you're ready. It'd be great if uh, in, in the chat, those who have got WeChat, just say, I've got WeChat. It'd be interesting to know. Oh, great. Glad if you haven't got WeChat, Oh, there we go, two new messages. You have got WeChat, excellent. Yay. <laughs> the, the thing that's surprising is when you go to China, everything is bought using WeChat. You know, taxis, movie tickets, meals. That is very Even, true, that is very true. Um, I was in Shanghai back in last November, and I was, that was, um, it's been a while since I was last in in China. So it was very surprising, even for me, to see how most of the um, people don't really carry, well, they don't seem to be carrying a wallet because all, everyone is paying on their phone 
through WeChat. Even little shops like little cafes, takeaway shops, everywhere. But this is how familiar um, they are with um, pay. Just, um, Simon, if you could just unshare, I will just share my sure. screen. All good for you to go, yep. Okay, great. Okay, go. I will just put this in the screen. So this is on my phone. As you all can see, at the bottom right corner, that's the app for WeChat. So I will just I will show you this is how WeChat looks like. So it's a chatting app. So these are all my friends and groups. Um, I will show you two of my customers' platforms. They uh, one is just a standard platform. The other one is more upgraded. It's with customized design. So both of so all that your accounts will be shown. In your friend, in users' friends list, like your friends speaking to you. So here, this one is one of my first clients. So this client has bought a standard package with um, with the e store, and built within the official account. So this is what the official account looks like. At the bottom are tabs that links to the this online store within WeChat. So once I click on it, it takes you to the online store. Now, just as a reminder, this is still within WeChat. It was not redirected to a third party platform or a website. This is all within WeChat. So we will provide a customized banner with your own logo, your own branding. And we also provide other banners just as introductions to your mall or to your store, or uh, also guiding the users on how to use this platform. So underneath this, you see four, you see four um, categories. This is what, um, so we recommend choosing either four categories or eight categories. This, this customer has chosen four for their different products. And so this can be clicked on and it would be shown in the inside there are the, their products in different categories. Underneath that are the brands. So these are the brands that this customer is selling. And underneath that are some of their favorite picks that they've selected as a recommendation for users. But underneath that, that will be a full list of their products. You can see there's a very clear image of their products, um, the title of that product, and how much it is in the local currency. So this user, uh, this customer is in Australia, and they want the display to be in Australian dollars. So the users can either click on any of the products. I'm just going to click on this one right here. And it will take you to the page of that product with, with more photos, with more introductions uh, explaining the product. So everything you need to know about the product. And at the bottom, the users can click buy now or add to cart. But there is also an easier way back in the main page. At the bottom right of every item, there is that little cart logo, which you can just simply click here and add to cart. So it's an easy way for users to go through all your products while they are using WeChat and easy for them to purchase. So once in the cart, so I have selected two items in there already, which I would like to pay for. And at the bottom right, there's that red button. So you could they you click on that to purchase, and that will and then it will take you to the WeChat payment confirmation page. So that's how easy it is. Once that's paid for, and as you know, it, WeChat is also a paying system, so they have money loaded within WeChat already. So and users are already quite familiar with paying in this format. So that will all be done smoothly for the users. Um, most of the WeChat users know how to pay in that sense, so we don't need to 
um, or, or, or um, you know, explain how that payment would be done. So once that payment is done, it would be that order will sent, be sent to the back-end platform where the business owner will see the order will pop in and it will show that it's been paid for. So then you can start process, um, processing with the shipment. Okay, so Good. just... Yeah, very good, Rachel. Sorry, just to, to interrupt. So just, just sort of um, in terms of the second Christmas opportunity, people can take their Christmas range of products and um, populate them into a store like this um, using those four day categories um, and, and just uh, enabling you know, our whole team to um, translate those descriptions into Chinese. Um, but the back end is in English. Uh, that's right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. The back end is the English version. Sorry. And um, you also had a, so that's kind of the, the basic version, which is pretty well featured. Um, what does the kind of premium version look like? Okay, no problem. I will take you to uh, my other customer that purchased the premium version. So Cosette, they sell luxury brands, like bags, accessories. So they will like a platform that more, that more represents their branding. So we have customized a store that suits their need. So this is um, their e-store. This is at the top, again, are the banners. So different banners, they have new releases, they have um, magazines, um, e electronic magazines, we call it. So it's like fashion shots. So these are all on these different banners. And right at the top there, Right at the top there, they, they have a search bar where you can search a specific brand or you have at the tab, at the very left tab, all the selections of the brands. And on the right hand side are the shopping, is the shopping cart and your own uh, personal settings. Great stuff. So, Great. But, um, the main thing is the, where are their products? So they are listed right here at the bottom. So they have subcategories such as this one here, the bag. If you click on that banner, it reviews with um, more a list of their products. And you can click on the bottom here that says see more. So all so you can see the full range of their products. Again, there is um, so the name and the photo is all listed here and there is an easy click um, to add to cart button on the right hand side. Or if they, the viewers want more details of this specific brand or this specific bag, they can click on the tab and it will take you to the products page with more images and with fine details on this product. So some, some companies will, they will know already from retail shop floor experience what Chinese consumers like. So that's another um, opportunity is to, is to take products that already sell well in, in the real world um, and put them on here. Um, and so I, I guess another thing is this, um, this uh, shop format can also be used for services. It's, it's, re it's really just a way of connecting customer to business. And, that is very true. Yeah. And, uh, uh, with what you said about um, you know products that the customer has selected, we yes. do give recommendations on products, especially for luxury brands. Um, Chinese would have their own favorite brands mm. that might be slightly different to the Western world. So sure. some brands um, has not yet been familiarized by Chinese consumers. So we will give suggestions on which ones, which items to select that will sell better for Chinese customers. Excellent. Thank you, Rachel. It's, it's really good to see the, the platform in action. Um, and, and so for, for brands wanting to get on board for Chinese New Year, um, this is just the beginning really. It's like having a shop, like, like having a location, um, but um, users are not gonna magically appear just because you're on there. You have to invite them in and that's where um, advertising options come in. So WeChat Moments, um, if Rachel, if you don't mind just showing your, your moments, your Pango Chan, um, it's a bit like the nearest 
it, it used to be so easy to describe Chinese apps because there was always an exact, there was an exact copy of something, but WeChat's special. It was one of the first Chinese apps to be completely very innovative in the way that it did things. So Moments is the nearest comparison is your Facebook feed. Um, and it's a space where you see updates from your friends, but also updates from, uh, also updates from brands through paid advertising and quite targeted advertising. Uh, through demographics, that sort of thing. Um, we also work, uh, Red Circle Network also works with partners in New Zealand like GoKiwi, SkyKiwi, and Australia like Today Australia. And in China, uh, we've got uh, Jinra Totiao and, uh, and various other advertising formats. Um, so that's, that's the way. You, you've got to have the platform and you've got to have your reach um, because these, you know, your customers have been saving all year into their WeChat wallet. Um, and now that you have them all, you can actually connect to that wallet. Um, so um, if you don't mind sharing, uh, stopping sharing your screen, Rachel, I'll, I'll carry on with the slides. Um, okay. Thank you. So, so basically, Red Circle Network supports you in the administration and entering processes the payments. So when you get paid um, in Chinese RMB, you end up getting AUD or NZD or whichever country that you're in, um, local currency with a, a nominal processing fee similar to a Visa or MasterCard. Um, and another great point about that is that WeChat users are familiar with and used to the, the kind of service fees that WeChat charges. So it's not going to be a surprise or a shock. Um, so this uh, in-ring transfer usually takes about 48 hours to directly go into your bank account, which is much faster than Stripe. Uh, which takes five days, which can be an eternity in, in business land. So now that you've just been to China for a second Christmas and you've, you've made a connection with the, the wallets Chinese people have saved up into all year, um, now for a very low investment, you can have a premium branded layout and look on your shopping mall. And because it's so cost efficient, it means you can, re, you can completely rebrand that shopping mall for different seasons. Say one for Chinese New Year, it's going to be the year of the pig. Um, so do with that what you like um, and another branding for say singles day or Halloween or whichever um, festival you want to uh, leverage off but singles day is where a lot of attention goes on to brands um, so yeah so let me just uh, share my screen Great stuff. Okay, um, so here's a brief uh, sort of explanation of what we've just seen. Um, Rachel, you also mentioned the um, the form uh, that uh, the information comes. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of technical stuff going on, but as you can see from this form, it's a very simple layout, um, and you just get the information that you need. So, this having the ability to actually sell your goods and services directly to your Chinese consumer, whether that's in China, whether that's in any of the countries around the world where we've got 50 million Chinese people, um, that's really important. So um, that's WeChat, that's your platform. That's one of the most important platforms to be on. Um, you know, recent studies show that 80% of mobile time in China is spent on WeChat. Um, so it's, it's not really just an app, it is a way of life. Um, okay, uh, that's, that's, um, that's WeChat. So. Um, now, it's not just a matter of getting technology. Technology won't give you a good strategy. Technology won't give you um, the right attitude. Technology won't guide you all the way up the mountain, but it is essential as a tool. But you've got to prepare your whole organization. And that's why, why we call the Red Circle Network uh, is because um, it, it's not just about one point of expertise. Um, China is, is a, a very complex culture very complex technology environment, a very complex business environment. So we start with business advisory, and um, uh, that's a very important part. For example, matchmaking with um, uh, distributors, on the ground distributors. Uh, we work in various kind of industries. Um, technology partner, so we work with uh, organizations like Enring marketing agency and so this is where we we become partners with your marketing organization um, and and repurpose your brand um, there's some ways uh, in which you can just take a simple idea and chinify it but you've got to have the expertise and the experience and the sensitivity to do that that's what dolce and gabbana did wrong that's what blandfield malt is doing right um, there's also creative production um, so we operate as a production house 
Um, we also partner with um, different uh, producers in different areas. Um, and we've got education and training, which is actually our secret plan. So if you're on this call, you're hearing our big secret because other agencies act like China is a temporary opportunity, and, and that's the way that uh, especially New Zealand Australian businesses act. Um, they act as if um, we just outsource this for now because it's in the too hard basket and we just get somebody else to do it. But China's influence is only going to grow. So the education and training piece is actually very important. How China ready is your business on the inside? So this is the kind of uh, industries that this is relevant for. Pretty much everybody, right? Um, so we've got finance, which is a non-tangible service. We've got education, the same thing. Health and beauty, which is all about physical products, getting it over the border, food and beverage. Um, challenger brands, if you're especially from New Zealand, you have to be a challenger brand. It's too, it's too small of a country to be anything else. Uh, and yet, um, there's a conservatism that, that our brands have that, that needs to change. So we, we help walk you through that process. Um, so what all this change involves, and I've hinted at this before, is emotional intelligence. Sir so Edmund Hillary had this fantastic quote, it's not the mountain that we conquer, it's not about getting to the top for the top's sake. You know, the wind is gonna blow that snow away, it's gonna be an actual different peak for the next generation, but it's actually ourselves that we conquer. Um, and we do that through emotional intelligence. Now, uh, we, we at Red Circle Network, we walk the talk on this um, because you know, we actually have to deal with our own um, uh, issues on this mountain. And um, so it's, it's very important to conquer yourself and prepare your people. Um, the owner obviously has to be bought into the idea of uh, going to China, but doing business with China. Um, uh, if there is, so what Dolce and Gabbana's story showed us was that there was a fundamental lack of respect. They may not have created that copy and the, and the video content, but they certainly approved it um, and they let it go that it was very disrespectful. They didn't quite get how offensive that would be. Uh, so the owner has to be on board. Um, C-level staff have to be on board. Um, the interesting thing about the Chinese space is that it often sits in an intersection. You've got your export manager who's normally thinking about logistics and products or services and you know getting access to the market. But then you've got your marketing team who are talking about creative and talking about the brand and talking about how to get our message across. So there's a space in between there that really Red Circle Network helps to bridge um, and get those two departments talking to each other about strategy. Um, we also work uh, down in the organization at the level of the social media manager uh, to understand. There we go, welcome. Welcome, Bruce. Um, yeah, so helping the social media manager actually understand the Chinese space as well. We work with platforms that repurpose your existing content into Chinese social media. So it's a mixture of sometimes straight translation, sometimes very extreme uh, repurposing because the market is different. Same applies for a digital marketing manager as well. So the China Business Ready um, program, uh, it, it is a program, it's a formal team program, a 12 month, three stage process. The three stages basically are crawl, walk and run. Um, we cover marketing and management, We're working at a quite a high strategic level. We cover technology, of course, we cover soft skills, we cover content. Um, and um, so that's quite a comprehensive, quite a widespread thing. This is because companies told us that's what they needed. They were getting advice from government, they were getting advice from China experts, but being able to put that advice into action was really, really challenging. Um, so we make it easy by making it, at the beginning, it's just at China. And we will handle all the things that you're not sure about. Um, we will handle all the things that you are sure about, but shouldn't be sure about. Um, so, here you can see the simple flow from Facebook and Twitter, for example, uh, through Red Circle Network to WeChat and also Weibo here. Weibo is known as the Chinese Twitter. So it's, it's the purpose of, it's the process of repurposing content. We're on board with you as your marketing strategy provider and agency of record uh, in the China space. Now, if you already have an agency of record in the everywhere else space, we're perfectly happy to work with them. Um, the more developed your brand is, the more developed your marketing strategy is, the happier we are because we've got something to work with. Not having said that, we also work with um, quite new companies that are still finding their feet. 
um, organizational capability, education, and training. There's somebody in your organization who in 12 months time is going to be running your Chinese social media marketing, even if, even if they don't speak Mandarin or read Mandarin, um, because um, what's really important is the skill of working with translators. So what we found when we talked with different companies is there's often a lot of accidental trust or inadvertent trust in that there's a language barrier, technology barrier. So there's just brand owners And we just thought that's not good enough. Um, that's why we have um, you know, the, the education and training program that we do so that you, your social media person, and who, whichever people you identify as important to go up this mountain with you, come along together on that journey. Um, we also act, as I say, as your lead creative content producer. So what does that content look like? Sometimes it looks like um, uh, content in a store, an e-store like Rachel showed us. Um, sometimes it is video content. Um, so uh, last year, I worked with the New Zealand Electoral Commission um, to attract local Chinese voters to vote. Um, and having come from a country where voting is not really done, um, it, it's kind of a, a big perception issue. So um, I was used as a bridge I was used, I, I volunteered, uh, I, um, yeah, my channel was used as a bridge to reach Chinese people to say, this is genuinely what uh, New Zealand is about. I can tell you that because I'm a New Zealander, um, but I'm telling it to you in your language in Mandarin. Um, so these videos were, were really successful at helping people understand um, what it means to be a New Zealander. We helped go beyond the simple ask, which is vote, to the real question underneath, which was, why should you vote? So lead creative content producer, um, business advisory consultants, technology platforms and implementation, you know, WeChat being one of those key platforms you just must be on. KOL influencers. So this is another um, word that gets thrown around a lot. Key opinion leaders. Uh, often people take a very simplistic view of we want somebody who's the Chinese equivalent of Kim Kardashian with gazillions of followers. Now, the sad fact about influence, whether it's in China or whether it's overseas, is that numbers don't always translate to real influence. Um, so somebody with a gazillion followers will be approached by a gazillion brands. That's an exact number, by the way, gazillion um, at brands saying, can you represent our brand? Can you, uh, you know, refer people to our brand? And they'll do it, and they'll do it in a very insincere way um, that uh, their users can actually see through it, and they won't take as much um, attention. So the, the real goal uh, anywhere in the world with influencer marketing is with the people who have uh, a really engaged audience and that may be in the hundreds or the thousands um, and so it's, it's finding those influences which is not an easy thing and it has to be done at the right stage of your campaign. Um, speaking of the right stage, knowing your audience is so important so we actually can help with China market research that can be formally through our, our research partners, that can be informally. So for example, uh, another one of our clients uh, had a question and I was just able to ask um, my personal WeChat network, I now, okay, so WeChat personal accounts, you can only have 5,000 friends, just like Facebook. I now have four of those. Um, um, <laughs> anyway, but, but what this gives me is access to, um, if I ask a good enough question, um, to, to people's opinions across the de geography of China, across different age groups, and across both genders. Um, so, so market research um, is, um, it's a knob, not a switch. Um, if you know zero, then even knowing one is better than knowing zero. So this China market research, media placement and advertising. Um, so as we mentioned, um, you can set up your store, you can set up your WeChat official account. It's not going to do anything if you don't invite people in. Um, so we work with media partners. Um, depending on your situation as well, we can help you. Um, WeChat is communicated through QR codes. That's how you follow a WeChat official account. So your, your office space, your retail space, um, even anything printed can actually have this QR code on it and enable people to connect. And the great thing about when, when you go to China, when you go to any restaurant, there's some restaurants don't even have paper menus anymore. You've got to ask specially for it because the table has built into it a QR code that you just scan with your phone and there's your menu and your ordering system. 
mind blowing, mind blowing. So um, um, people in China are used to QR codes. So some of this advertising uh, does itself if your brand is attractive enough to them. So I talked about the three steps. Let's go into the three steps. Um, step one is cruel. We do it while you learn. Um, so uh, often people, people have a, um, a relationship with the China market where it starts off and ignorance is bliss. It's like, great, it's like any other market. We just go in, we just do the th same thing we do everywhere else. And then the learning process is like, oh my gosh, this is really hard. So while you learn, we're taking that pressure on ourselves. Um, and it's also we're creating process. Some things have existing tools for, like, uh, like the uh, RCN Mall, uh, or, or like uh, the, the content management tool that we use. If not, we actually help you create that process. Uh, and we manage and you support us. You give us the information that we need, um, the insight that we need to accelerate. And then we create your on-brand content. And the great thing about social media is that you can adapt and adjust to feedback that comes in. It's a two-way medium. So then step two is walk. We do it together. Our, our tools are set up so that your team is part of our team and we are part of your team. We collaborate. We support you to manage your own Chinese social media. And then we deliver content and get results. So we start with learn and we end with earn, where you're doing it. Um, you're developing the independent capability via business process. Um, and that's now by this time, you man you're managing and we're supporting. So we're giving you cost savings. Um, you know, uh, often when these technology and business processes are implemented, you can save um, HR cost. Um, so um, it, we're entering, perhaps we're entering into a recessionary environment. Um, so it's very important to save costs, but still get value, must get value. Um, and so what we're leaving you with is internal capability and regular content that's self-managed. So even if you reduce the kind of service that you get from Red Circle Network or any other provider, the Simply Translation, you will at least have somebody who knows what the strategy is all about, what the market is all about. Um, as you heard from Gabby, it's really important to have that, that real eye of what's on the ground. Um, and it's, you know, you might be asking, how, how do I know what's on the ground? I'm here in Auckland, New Zealand. That also comes from having that connection online with people um, who are in China and a wide range as well. So we, we have a saying um, in, in the world, it takes a, a village to raise a child, right? It means that, you know, that the wisdom of many people is needed to raise one person. And it's the same thing with um, your business in China. Um, it takes a network to elevate a business. So we believe really strongly in collaborative innovation. You know, the 20th century was all about disruptive innovation. It was all about, you know, really um, getting in there and disrupting and, um, you know, uh, uh, inserting yourself into the, the market. We believe in collaborative innovation. That's why we act as your team. Um, and we get on the same page because we are all smarter than me. Uh, you know, more people, better together. Um, so... As you can see, um, there'll, be, there'll be a leader, there'll be somebody in, in your organization who is going up the mountain already. There are others following behind. The even smarter thing is to catch the elevator with business process optimization. Um, so we start climbing, but we end with a very smooth process. I watched a video about Everest the other day. Now it was, it was unclimbable when Hillary and Tenzing um, conquered that summit back in 1953. Nowadays, there's about 200 people every day making their way to the summit. There's actually traffic jams, well, on foot traffic jams near the summit of Everest um, because it's been, the processes have been optimized to get up there. And it's still deadly, it's still a very dangerous place, but they've made it streamlined. And that's the same kind of thing that Red Circle Network is doing with the China market. Um, it is still full of, business danger and business risk and business opportunity. Um, but our approach here is actually work with you um, and, and make that happen. So the next step is to get China business ready. We have a bunch of different pathways to value depending on who you are, what industry you're in. You know, um, a wise man once told me, you know, every client is different. That's why every client has to be treated the same. So we, we have a, a streamlined approach, but for different industries. So if you're selling a physical product, uh, like Manuka honey, for example, and you want to get that to China, or you're already in China, you're already selling through a distributor. And um, a, a scenario we're often presented with is the distributor does everything. And um, 
I'm kind of happy with that as a business owner, but I'm also kind of a bit nervous. You know, what are they doing with my brand? Are they are they managing my price well? Are they um, are they presenting myself? You know, my brand compared other brands well so it's China export ready where we um, we help you with your physical product into China China service ready is where we look at um, education tourism we what you're selling is an experience um, so we've got and, and this can be uh, very innovative companies so we've got one client that's um, based in the UK uh, they've got a, a global team around the world and, and their business is a web-based business into China very challenging um, but it's possible in this day and age. So China service ready, um, also focus on traditional education, traditional um, tourism, where what you're wanting to sell is the experience when somebody comes from China to you. China local ready, now we talked about the 50 million Chinese that are not in China. Um, across Australasia, that's 1.4 million. That's pretty sizable. Um, and so cities like Sydney, like Auckland, and even like Perth have this massive audience of Chinese local people, but they're not using the same channels that you're using. They're not using, uh, you know, Facebook or uh, local TV or um, et cetera. So China Local Radio is where we, we start to help you reach your local audience. This can also be a bridge as a, as a beginning to the export stage. Now, some companies are looking for just one customer. And that is China Partnership Ready. They're looking for the right investor to either um, help their business grow in China or to completely take it over. Um, so China Partnership Ready, we help apply some of the same principles to help you achieve this goal. And finally, China Western Ready, because this bridge, we're building a bridge to value. This bridge goes both ways. And we have Chinese companies wanting to come into Western countries like uh, New Zealand, like Australia. Um, and so China Western really is that bridge in reverse. We help you get into platforms like LinkedIn, like Facebook, like YouTube. We help you manage your messaging uh, and uh, the way you present yourself so that um, Aussies and Kiwis who, let's face it, can be pretty um, xenophobic sometimes, um, can say, oh, that looks familiar, that feels familiar, I understand it. So that's our China Western ready. Um, so I've just gone through these. Um, feel free to contact me with more information about any of these. Um, but where do you start? So you've been presented with us, uh, this idea that um, China is the, the mountain of opportunity, 1.4 billion customers, 50 million around the world, um, and 1.4 million across Australia. You've been presented with the opportunity that um, they, they're using a wallet system. The, the form of social media is not just social media, it's social commerce and how does it actually connect with you, with your business, with your bank account. Um, and we're also presenting the opportunity that you can have a second Christmas. So where do you start? We want to encourage you to take the test. Are you China business ready? Is your brand China business ready? Um, now we're going to have an automated version of this on our website very shortly. But for right now, um, the test is me. It's a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself and with Glenn, who you met earlier. Um, our, our chairman of the board, and to really understand, are you China business ready? Um, and, and we look at all aspects of your business related to your industry and just see, you know, where are those areas that you need to improve on? Now, um, the way we've set it up is that you can just add China um, for Chinese New Year, for the year of the pig, for the 5th of February 2019. Now, you might be thinking that's impossible. There's not enough time. Um, we want to take just a very small amount of your time to do this test and to get the right information from you to then create your campaign, create your platform to be able to win this, uh, this Chinese New Year, to be able to have that second hit um, after Christmas. So depending on the industry you're in, that may be um, super relevant to you. We are, we are really looking forward to talking with you about this. So um, thank you for your attention, your time. We're now going to have a question and answer session. Um, so. Um, uh, let's let's let the questions fly. Shocked silence. Thank you, Glenn. Hey Simon, I thought I'd come and keep you company. There are a few people here, and there's some questions they have in the chat window, a little bit further up. Rachel, you're welcome to. Um, uh, uh, share your voice uh, with us as well, and um, and, and come back and um, interview again if you if you like. Um, but let's look at some of the 
questions that were posed a little bit earlier. Uh, so, for example, Paul was talking about um, not knowing how to use WeChat. So you can help with that, can't you? Indeed, um, indeed. Yes, I'm sure we, me and Simon, can both help with that. Um, my screen again. So, as I was um, showing on my phone earlier, so it's like all the other social media apps. So, you basically, you add in friends uh, that you meet, you become friends, and then you start we WeChat team, which is like messaging within the app. So all your apps, um, so all the messages, um, you can send messages, you can send videos, you can actually call one another, or you can have a conference call like what we're having now. That's all within WeChat. And you can see what your friends are posting every day. So they can post their daily lives, which is um, the moments that Simon has mentioned before. And also you will have a wallet within the WeChat. So that wallet is linked to a bank account, a bank card. So most likely it's a Chinese bank card and you can transfer money into that uh, WeChat account. So it will, it will be stored in there. The reason a lot of people transfer money into their account is because one for purchase, so they don't have to carry a card around, they just need their phone. Second of all, there is a, um, very successful function within WeChat. It's called the red envelope. Oh, so yeah. That is a Chinese um, gesture for gratitude, for thank you, for um, anything. So they send a red, red envelope which contains money to their friends or relatives. So, Rachel, is it possible, uh, Simon, are you still sharing your screen? Are you yeah. able to, um, to, to perhaps port your, your phone in a WeChat so some of the th and show people some of the things that Rachel is talking about so they can see a visual? Yeah, let me grab that. Okay, sure, I can do that. So, that Simon, can, if Simon oh, does it. I can do that, yep. Because he's already sharing, then he can, he can just, uh, uh, that way you don't have to switch over. Um, Good stuff. Your Wi-Fi networks, that sort of thing. Yep. So um, great stuff. Just getting that set up. Um, so um, yeah, um, what Rachel said is quite true about um, red envelopes. I remember when they first came out, when I, when I was first using WeChat, and you're in a group, and somebody drops one of these red envelopes in it. Um, the moment before I clicked on it, I didn't understand what all the fuss was about. The moment I opened it and there was actual currency in my account, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, and the psychology of, um, it's the same way casinos work in, in a way, like the psychology of winning something random is uh, just amazing. Yes, and this is actually you can use, and that's what makes it so attractive. So it is a Chinese tradition to give red envelopes at events, uh, at um, any ceremonies or maybe at in the Chinese New Year especially. So we receive red envelopes from um, our relatives or we will be giving uh, red envelopes to relatives or children if, you're, oh. if we're married. Yeah. You've so got a, a new message there, uh, Rachel. Yeah, oh, I have a, quite a few messages. So this is on my phone. One of them's from me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, good. Uh, okay, look, one at a time. Um, let's talk about the moments that I mentioned before. So underneath at the bottom tabs, uh, discover. And here you can see moments. So that is where all, where I can see what my friends are posting every day. So here, ah, oh, and there is a photo of me. So this is my own home page, you can call it. And underneath that, these are all my friends' posts. So these are all my friends who posted this one minute ago, my friend who went for a competition at South Island posted that two minutes ago. So these are all my friends post, every single one of them. So advertisement on WeChat will happen in here. It will pop up like one of my friends post. So, but it will have your advertisement in there. In a similar format to the Suling here, so you will have a photo, you will have words of your brand, of your um, products, and so which you can click on, 
And then at the top there, with the little icons on the left, that is your account. You can click on that and that takes you to this WeChat account. So this is how the moment advertisement will work. So it will be broadcasted to uh, this, your selection of audience and they will all see it on their moments even though they're not they're not your friend so and then but if they're interested in your products they will click on your account or your images or videos for viewing so this is very interesting this is what um most two, three hours a day doing <laughs> is yeah, yeah, right. going through all the engagement. I have about 300 friends and yet I have scrolled down like seven, eight pages and that's still 39 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so the main thing is for Paul, who was asking about, um, you know, he's familiar with um, uh, using other sort of Western platforms. Um, uh, our team can can really help help you, Paul. Uh, Paul's not in, in a meeting right now, but I uh, had to go. But this is recorded and can be played back later. Um, our team, so Simon, uh, obviously he's got four accounts and about twenty thousand people, so you know clearly knows how to use it really well. And and Rachel um, and and the rest of our team can support with coming into an understanding. We'll actually help you to set up a a personal account because uh, you'll need to do that. And, and then the other thing is, of course. Uh, if you want to step into the commercial world of, of commercializing, um, you know, so social commerce, uh, then having that WeChat official account, remembering that that's actually, yeah, you know, it's a proper commercial uh, account, and it's not like Facebook or uh, Instagram that you can set those up yourself. Um, you can actually uh, easily set them up, not just because of the barrier of language, you know, with uh, Chinese, um, but also because it's it's actually a commercial, so it's a commerce account. And there is a, a quite a complicated um, compliance process to go through to, to activate that. So, uh, but you're in good hands there with Simon and and, uh, and Rachel and others in our team. So that's pretty brilliant. I'm just looking through uh, some of the questions, making sure that we're answering some of the things in the Q and A. So we got Paul, uh, obviously John and uh, has WeChat. Um, how do you spell the web page? Um, well, so WeChat obviously is not really a web page. It's a, it's a um, an application. So you would you would download that through your mobile phone, uh, through either Android or through um, iOS, which is Apple. Um, so down, download the WeChat application, and that's how you would get access to that. Um, but if it's Red Circle, our web page, uh, then uh, we'll, uh, Simon will type that into the uh, chat now for you. There's a .dot com uh, that we've got. Uh, that uh, you, you can go to and uh, some of this information is on the website but Simon's even better he did say at the end of his presentation you can talk to him directly that's even better than going to the website so um, Simon will also put his email address into the uh, chat for for that answer as well about the web page um, I think that's pretty much all the questions that I can see it, it, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, so um, for those that are still here, uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to pose them now. Otherwise, uh, you're very welcome to uh, connect with uh, Simon um, a little bit later. And I can see that uh, uh, Ramon's sent something through there, but um, um, we'll, we'll check that out. But any other questions, feel free to pose them. Hello, Lorraine. Hello. Thank you very much, Simon. That was um, and Rachel. That was hugely informative. Um, so I'm sure that everyone will receive massive value and will get um, know what they don't know um, yeah. to move forward. Pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay. So oh. if there are no more questions. Well, I'm just Glenn, looking, do you want to uh, I see that uh, Ramon has sent through a link to a prezi.com, which is about hemp. And um, yes, so uh, if you want to take a, a presentation like that at, or a brand like that or an opportunity like that and make that available through, um, through, through uh, to Chinese people, remembering just to sort of wrap on this actually, that it's not just uh, people that Chinese people in mainland China, I just want to reinforce that, that idea that there are 100,000 Chinese people in Perth, right? And, and there are 500,000 Chinese people in Sydney 
you know, there are over 200,000 Chinese people in, in New Zealand with most of them in Auckland. So there are uh, massive opportunities for to do a business locally and, and to do that quickly. Uh, so even for businesses that want to export, uh, it's a really good idea to, to start you know, uh, to crawl before you, you, you walk, before you run and start with your local Chinese audience because then you can get really direct feedback about your brand, you know, drive, just add on China, have a second Christmas, um, as Simon said, he's going to, he's turning Chinese, he's gonna, he's going to work through Christmas while you're on the beach relaxing, he'll be the one preparing your brand to go into China in, in the new year. So you'll come back and you'll have the second Christmas and be smiling uh, all the way to China. Um, so it's about sort of preparing the way, uh, and, but don't stop there. You, you know, as uh, Rachel said, uh, you want to continue on that journey th through the year and, and build on what you've created uh, with the Chinese New Year leading up to the uh, really big you know, uh, Black Friday, which is uh, the biggest Black Friday in, in the world, actually, uh, which is the... Um, singles day in November and so you, you'll be in, in good shape getting on board through Christmas so the idea is it's the end of November now you can talk to Simon uh, on Monday or next week and in fact he could even have you ready uh, to, to, to go away um, yes. pretty much everything done right Simon because you're so you quick and efficient. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, by, by Friday next week so um, you, you know there's not, not a lot he's, he's very organized and so his uh, He'll, ha he'll have you in good shape. So I just thought I'd reinforce that for some of you that uh, will be watching the video online um, or later when you receive it. Um, and, and thank you for that comment about hemp because, yes, pretty much you can sell almost anything, but there are some rules uh, around what can and can't be sold in China and, uh, yeah, and obviously some rules in, in Australia and New Zealand that, that uh, to our governments. Simon knows all of them. Uh, and he has an idea called, uh, I got from him called Just Because China. Oh, and yes. so there are some rules apply, and if he says to you, Just Because China, uh, <laughs> then listen to what Simon says, uh, because uh, he really knows what he's talking about. So he, he'll let you know whether you can do something with hemp and hemp supermarkets and what you can do um, you, with, with that brand in China. So talk to him a little bit later. Thank you for sharing all of that, Ramon. We, we see the links, and I've been to the mm -hmm. A Prezi link, so uh, you'll be able to connect directly with Simon and he'll be able to fill you in. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay, yep. Thank you very much, uh, Ramon. Um, link in with Simon and he'll get back to you. That's great. Um, I know you've been keen to um, get on this presentation, so thank you very much. So thank you to Glenn, Simon and Rachel. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure. It's really great information that we need to push out here and we hope that you'll come back and do it again. Awesome, looking forward to it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, D32, Business Arena, and Lorraine. We really appreciate your hosting uh, this information. And thank you to the people that have tuned in to watch this. And uh, we look forward to helping you just add China. Thank you. See you, Ramon. Thank you, Ramon. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.